Here we are, 2022, and many of you are wondering whether or not we're in a housing bubble. So in this episode, I'm going to tackle this question. Welcome everyone to this episode of the Ask Jason Jellius Show. I'm Jason Jellius, Michigan Realtor, and I appreciate you tuning in to this week's episode. Hey, if you're new to this show, welcome. I appreciate uh, all of you who uh, show love for the show and the questions, quite honestly. So this question I get asked a lot, right? And it's, are we in a housing bubble? And here we are, it's the middle of 2022. Many people are speculating that we are in a housing bubble, right? Although they're not really the experts that I like to rely on, okay? Which kind of hints to my answer. But anyway, I'm gonna, first off, I want to actually share with you the comparison between where we're at now in the housing market compared to um, the recession of 2008 which was a very interesting time, right? At that time, I was on the mortgage side of things and we were seeing so many crazy things, okay? So I wanna share with you some information. So again, this is these are comparison, comparison facts, uh, comparing where we're at now, the middle of 2022, to the recession of 2008, okay? So first off, right now, right now, it's seven times more difficult to get a mortgage than it was in 2008. In 2008, lenders were just giving out loans, right? The local gas station clerk was able to write you a mortgage, and, and I'm half joking about that, actually, okay? Many opened up just broker names and were doing mortgages. It was a nuts time, okay? Now, many people that were applying for those mortgages and getting those mortgages shouldn't have even been given $20, and that's harsh, I'm sorry. However, it's true, many people that were getting these mortgages should not have been approved. They weren't financially or fiscally responsible to actually get those loans and pay them back, okay? Today, the average credit score of a borrower is over 700. These are people that pay their bills. If you have a credit score that's 700 or above, you're paying your bills pretty good, okay? So you're not gonna see these people not pay their mortgage. But let me further share with you some interesting information here. Now, another comparison is in the four years leading up to the 2008 recession, okay, the country, right, home builders, all that, we built twice as many homes as were needed to satisfy demand, okay? So we had an oversupply of homes in 2008. Too many homes, too much inventory. Imagine that. We need those homes now. Okay, today we have a deficit of 5.8 million homes to meet the current record demand. This means that we would have to overbuild what, like 1 million homes, okay, for the next year, uh, over the course of the next six years after that, okay, just to get back to the equilibrium supply and demand needed for a healthy market. So in other words, you're not gonna see a bunch of foreclosures and you're not gonna see things like that, okay? You're just not. Now, that probably won't happen with inflation happening because you have higher costs, uh, buyer demand is, is uh, slowing down a little bit, which is actually good in my opinion, okay? Currently, over 50% of homeowners have more than $250,000 in equity in their homes, okay? 50, over 50% of homeowners in America have more than $250,000 in equity in their home. Okay, that you're probably not going to see a bubble when you have that many homeowners having that much equity, okay? 37% of Americans own their homes outright. So they own it. They can tap into it if they need it. If they need to pay their bills or, you know, get by, they can tap into that equity, okay? These aren't people that are just waiting to foreclose, to default on their loan. It's just, that's not going to happen when you have a house that's paid off or you have, you know, $250,000 in equity. That wouldn't happen if you had $50,000 in equity, unless somebody was crazy, okay? And by the way, that money goes somewhere. People are investing, savvy, invest, savvy homeowners are investing that money into other things. Now, mortgage rates have risen to just below 6% where we're at right now, okay? 
which isn't good compared to December 2021. However, however, the historical average is 8%. 8% historical average. And we just approached 6%, which by the way, it, it goes up and down every, every week. I get it, right? Okay, or rather, you know, daily. Uh, but you get weekly updates. But still, okay, the historical average is 8% on a mortgage. Ask your ask somebody who lit, who bought a home in the 80s what the interest rate was. And I know some of you will say, well, the, the houses were cheaper. They were. But think about it, right? They were like 20% interest rate. Okay? Take out a personal loan at 15% and see what that is, that payment is. Okay? Now, if you don't buy, if you don't buy a home right now in 2022 because you're thinking, well, I'm going to wait till the rates you know, go down again. Well, don't wait for that for one, because it won't be anytime soon. However, if you, if you choose to rent, you're paying someone else's equity down. You rent an apartment, you're paying down their commercial loan, or you're paying them direct, they're building equity. You rent a home, you're paying someone else's landlord or um, equity. Okay. You're paying down their loan. Therefore their equity goes up and you're helping someone else get rich in real estate. Okay. So, and by the way, rental prices are at all time highs as well. So you really can't can't go route B when route A, you know, is hard because both routes are high priced right now, okay? Now, oh, and by, and by the way, I, I actually shared this on, on uh, social media and I thought it was really cool uh, that when you rent, you're paying 100%. You're not paying 6%, you're not paying 8%. You're paying 100%. No equity built there, by the way, okay? Now, one more thing. Deceleration does not mean depreciation. So I'm going to share with you, um, I put together some numbers here as far as um, home values and all this stuff, right? Because many people, including inexperienced uh, agents, I'm sorry to say, but they are, I see it where they're sharing, oh, by the way, you know, home values are going to drop and all this stuff, which I'm sorry, it's frustrating. Okay. Um, however, Many housing markets, many areas are slowing down. Yes, they are. And while, and what, by the way, I'm all over the place here for a minute, but you may not see 20 to 30% increases like we were seeing the past three years, two, three years, right? More like three years. Okay. However, market predictions for housing says that for the next five years, they show a steady gain of equity, home values increasing 9%. This year, 2022, right at the end of the year, they actually calculate where the numbers are at and everything. 5% in 2023 and 3% to 5% in the next couple years following that. Okay. Pretty interesting. Now, one more thing. Overall, the amount of usable equity, equity that homeowners can actually pull out and use towards other things, paying off debt, investing in something that gives a higher return, whatever the case is. Okay, paying for their son, their uh, their uh, kid's college fund, right? Okay, the amount of usable equity available to homeowners grew last year by $11 trillion. And like I said earlier in the video, that money's going somewhere. They're spending it towards something, okay? Are we in a housing bubble in 2022? No. Are we going to see a housing bubble? Experts economic analysts, okay, people who study numbers and economy and that's all they do, okay, experts, experts, and knowledgeable realtors who know the market are stating no, no housing bubble, no crash coming. Will we see recession? <laughs> probably. We'll probably see recession happening, but you're not going to see a housing bubble like we did in 2008. There's just too many too many things that aren't in place right now to cause a housing bubble, to cause home values to drop. They're going to, you know, be steady. Like I said, right? The 9% the first, this year, and then it, it went down to like five and then three, and then it'll probably go up again. But we're going to be in a buyer's market. And so you're going to have more first time buyers purchasing home and they're going to have homes and they're going to have a chance to own a home, which is exciting. We should be thinking about that. And if you're thinking about selling a home, you have to know that your power to negotiate is dwindling, okay? However, if you are if you make less on the selling side, you'll probably gain on the buying side because you'll have an easier time buying a home. Seesaw effect, 
okay? With a little window of opportunity of you gaining on both the selling and actually the buying side too. So that's a little window, okay? So I hope you found this episode valuable. Please share your thoughts in the comments. And oh, by the way, follow me on social media. Those links are in the description below and visit my website. It's allabouttherealestate.com. That link is also in the description below as well. You can also uh, fill out the pop-up form to receive a new episode each week in your email with some other valuable stuff that I throw in there. So I'm Jason Jellius, Michigan Realtor, and I appreciate you watching.